Yes. Thank you. Okay. Politics. Uh, something else as an uh, ambassador. Sorry. Um, when Hurricane Sandy hit New York, um, you see on the right uh, what happened is uh, you see on the left. Now, Hurricane Sandy was not a surprise. It was also not the worst storm ever. Uh, we've seen worst storms all over the world. But it hit New York, and everybody knows New York, so it was the opportunity, at least for President Obama, to raise it to the top of his agenda. Now, Obama was aware of this when he started office. Uh, actually, on, in his first month, he said, no Katrina on my watch. And what he meant with that, he didn't want to see uh, malfunctioning federal government not being on the ground when the disaster hit. So he made his team prepare. He knew the region was at risk. Why? We do all this research that just shows that New York is a vulnerable place with a lot of assets at risk. It actually ranks number third in the World, World Bank study on assets at risk. Now Sandy created a lot of mess in the New York region and therefore a lot of default in infrastructure. So the federal government, even with this fragmentation in Congress we talk about, allocated $60 billion to the rebuilding of the region. $60 billion is a, uh, is a common effort by Republicans and Democrats. Uh, you couldn't imagine that now with Trump and Clinton agreeing over $60 billion, but at that time, after a disaster, you take such an opportunity. Obama installed a task force, the Hurricane Sandy Rebuilding Task Force I served on, and we were tasked to spend the billions. Now, I did study in the region right after Sandy with my Harvard student, and it showed that if there's a word for governance fragmentation, this is the region where you'll find it. Um, you have voluntary mayors on the Jersey Shore, no mayors on Long Island, big shot mayor in New York, a Republican governor in New Jersey, a Democratic governor in New York, and different constitutions with different positions for every politician and government agency in the world. So what does 60 billion boil down to? Business as usual. So this is the rebuilding process of New York, and this is actually federal policy that makes you raise your house after a disaster. Now, we know that the complexity of vulnerability is critical. It's not only that 75% of the power supplies in the floodplain and 80% of fuel storage in the floodplain, there's also a clear connection between social vulnerability and physical vulnerability, as is shown in the map with the red and the blue. Blue is water, thanks to Sandy. Red is poor, thanks to US policy. Um, when it's purple, and I was there, this is Newark uh, on the map, uh, social housing, low-income housing, uh, a surge that was almost as high as, uh, actually as high as this room, and the water was so contaminated, they had to close the playgrounds because the soil got contaminated and the kids would actually get really sick. So the question of the task force, of, of the president to the task force was, how can you leapfrog to the future? And for that I re developed a competition. Uh, it's called Rebuild by Design. And this competition, therefore, was a top-down decision uh, entering uh, the bottom-up approach. My position in that task force was to create a detour, a sidestep out of regulatory uh, gridlocks, but also a sidestep out of the disconnect between politics and people, with professionals and the communities, because there's no way you can get to innovation if you uh, trust uh, on the policies of today. This detour consisted of asking the talent of the world to work with talent of the region, and really think at the regional scale. So from a national perspective or a federal perspective, find out what the vulnerabilities and interdependencies are on that regional scale. But at the same time, go deep on the local. Find out the local need. Let the people sit at the same table as designers and planners and urban designers and engineers and social scientists and economists, so the whole bunch of them, and politicians and anyone you can name, and make the match between that systemic need as well as the personal need. We had all the agencies for the federal government, we had all regional governments, we had partnering organizations for the knowledge, we had some millions from foundations to fund the process and fund the teams. Out of 148, we had 10 teams with international talent 
and a jury, but most importantly, we had over 500 organizations with over 5,000 people working with us for nine months to discover what to do next. We came up with 10 projects in one region, and here's the list. Uh, and in a way, this was a match between top-down and bottom-up. It was a way for the federal government to take this sidestep out of their responsibility. But they allocated a billion dollars out of the 60 to actually start the implementation. So this was not a game, this was real. Uh, we took a systems approach. Now you can go back to von Humboldt to think about what a systems approach means, but we know when we think about system that everything's connected, social, cultural, economic, and environmental. And the World Economic Forum proves us right that this systems approach is a necessity when we think about vulnerabilities in the future. And the interdependencies between them boil down both in where they come from, their origin, as in the way they impact, so how we adapt. So being comprehensive, both in mitigation and adaptation strategies, is actually a way forward. And this is where planning and design comes in. Now, we've seen these two. Um, we made the, uh, the joke in the Rebuild by Design task force to say, wish they married and got babies. I don't know if that would have ever been a happy marriage, but um, the idea that the merger of these perspectives uh, could actually get to this issue. Because walking in a disastrous region, and it can be Bangladesh or Myanmar or the Philippines after typhoons, but it can also be New Jersey, this is the sign that comes on the wall when people lose everything. This man lost his wife, his house, and his business. So he doesn't want to leapfrog. He doesn't care what an architect or a politician thinks about the future. He wants to go back. So that small need needs to be connected with a professional urge, and not with the police sending in, as the US did after Hurricane Katrina. So it's public and private, it's collective and corporate, and it's about ownership with all community, all the way up to the president and down. Rebuild by Design challenged this institutional capacity, came up with transformative projects, increased capacity on the local as well as on the federal scale. It was replicated, replicated on the national scale with a national competition and even an international challenge in Asia and Africa. And there was real funding for real implementation. But there's a problem. When you ask for innovation, you need to change the rules. Because innovative projects never fit within current boundaries for implementation. And now New York and New Jersey are tasked for implementing innovative projects with a billion dollars, and they're stuck with the rules they got. They have the same rules of housing and urban development, they have the same rules that were created by their own constituencies, by their own governments on their local and regional scale, and only the rules of the community changed. So now there's the expectation that these communities actually get innovative projects while the government fails to change. So the detour has to impact the rules. Now I go back to the highest level of the world, which was the Paris Agreement, no party, but a showcase of our failure. But there's also a business case in that failure. If we don't change the curves in the next five years, we'll never get to a two degree world. Now, five years is like a political term. Five years is also uh, an economic, you, you can e easily assess it in an economic way. So if we start to think about making city, we have to prepare for the future and not respond and repair. Use this detour approach, but also dare to start. And that's the failure of today's politics, is that we don't dare to start because we don't dare to make mistakes. Now, I don't know, Juan, if we can use Habitat 3 in the urban agenda as the detour process, because I'm not certain that these guys and girls, men and women, can actually be connected through a design process uh, where we bring everybody together with the finest we promised the world. And I don't want to put Alejandro in the weirdest position ever, but wouldn't it be great to see such a match turn will into something powerful. Thank you.